Welcome to the Highly Sensitive Person Podcast, a twice monthly podcast for people who experience the world intensely. Join me on a journey of acceptance of our highly sensitive person traits. Welcome to episode 59 of the HSP Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly. This is a show for people who have sensory processing sensitivity. I share stories, reflections, and personal experiences about the benefits and struggles of being highly sensitive, from my perspective. Before I start, I'd like to share an email I recently received from a listener named Clara, who I believe is in Germany. She wrote, I discovered HSP during my lifelong self-diagnosing journey of going through books and articles about depression, borderline disorder, which I was diagnosed with and really believed, bipolar disorder, antisocial disorder, and many more, believe it or not. That part of my life was over when I started listening to your podcast. I had read about HSP and was already on board, but listening to a real person, as simple as that sounds, made it real to me, made me hear and not just read that I'm not alone and that I'm fine, that everything I struggled with so much growing up actually was a great part of myself that I should be proud and not ashamed of. Thank you so much, Clara, for that really lovely testimonial. That's completely the reason I started the show, was to try to help others realize that they aren't the only ones who feel this way. You aren't crazy, wrong, or weird. You're normal. If you're a longtime listener of this show, you might be wondering what's going on with the format. The previous two shows have been interviews, whereas all the shows before that were just me talking alone, and they were really short, which I know a lot of people like. I'm thinking that the show in the future will continue as a mixture of those things. When I come across people who I think would be super, super interesting and valuable guests, I will have shows with them, and other times I'll just ramble on solo, like I plan to do today. I realized recently that I've never done a show about the benefits of being highly sensitive in detail, which is kind of crazy. I've been pretty hardcore into learning about high sensitivity for the past few years, And I feel like it's only now that I'm really starting to notice when my sensitivity is making itself known and when it's a good thing. I'm only recently starting to embrace it instead of trying to squash it or ignore it or tell myself that I'm wrong. And it feels so good. It feels good to notice it happening and then think to myself, oh, I'm thinking that way because of my sensitivity. That's kind of neat. As HSPs, we have certain traits that make us better suited to some things, whereas people without the trait might be better suited to other things. Being highly sensitive doesn't make us better or worse than other people. This discussion of the benefits of high sensitivity, I'm planning to stretch it out over a few episodes because I have a lot to talk about. Today, I'm going to talk about the people who are celebrated for their sensitivity. HSPs are meant to be here. There is a role we were born to play. If there wasn't, high sensitivity would have been bred out of humans a long time ago, in an evolutionary sense. HSPs fill a role in society that no one else can fill. It's easy to get down on yourself about being highly sensitive sometimes. We can focus on the negatives and wonder, why can't I be like everyone else? Or why are things so difficult for me? And at times we might hate our sensitivity, which leads us to hate a part of ourselves, which is obviously not healthy nor a path to contentment. So right now, I ask you to think about artists, authors, musicians, and actors. Think about someone who really moves you with their art. Or think about a piece of art that made you cry, moved you, or left you in awe. When I think of my favorite paintings or poems, I can't imagine that the creators were not highly sensitive. How could they not be? They have to notice tiny details, sense emotion and meaning, and find ways to express all this through words or painting or music in ways that move us. The art in our world is largely thanks to people like us who are highly sensitive. This is a benefit of the trait. You are among these special people. So when you're hating on your sensitivity, think about that. 
that there are so many people who are celebrated for it and the joy and beauty their talents bring to the world. There are people who are successful and famous and rich even, and a large part of that is due to their sensitivity. They are celebrated for it and the joy and beauty their talents bring to the world. Now, I'm not one to put celebrities on a pedestal and I don't follow famous people's lives much, but it can help to hear from some well-known people who are celebrated for their sensitivity in their respective professions. Actor Zoe Deschanel has a quote that I have to admit I love. She once said, Being tender and open is beautiful. As a woman, I feel continually shushed. Too sensitive, too mushy, too wishy-washy, blah, blah. Don't let someone steal your tenderness. Don't allow the coldness and fear of others to tarnish your perfectly vulnerable beating heart. Nothing is more powerful than allowing yourself to truly be affected by things. Whether it's a song, a stranger, a mountain, a raindrop, a tea kettle, an article, a sentence, a footstep, feel it all. End quote. Winona Ryder once said, Maybe I'm too sensitive for this world. The actor Brittany Murphy once said, I'm a very oversensitive, vulnerable person. You have to be to do this for a living. Michael Jackson, who was known to be shy and a bit of a recluse, once said, It hurts to be me. Actor Jennifer Beals once said, I get emotional all the time. I get emotional every time I make a speech or talk about other cast members. Every now and again, my heart just explodes and expands. Nicole Kidman once said, Most actors are highly sensitive people, but you have this incredible scrutiny. You have to develop a thick skin, but you can't have a thick skin in your work. So it's that constant push-pull of going, how do I stay human and vulnerable and real? And how do I, at the same time, not let all this affect me? End quote. I think that's something we all find challenging, how to stay vulnerable and real, but at the same time not being overwhelmed by how much everything affects you. Licky Lee, a Swedish musician, said, When I talk about heartbreak or whatever, people want to melt it down to some breakup of a relationship, but it's not about that. If you're a sensitive person, just stepping outside can be heartbreaking. Alanis Morissette, who was featured in the documentary Sensitive, shared her experience of being an extremely famous person who was highly sensitive. She talked about how her trait enabled her to write lyrics and music that moved people and made her hugely successful, but that same quality, her sensitivity, made dealing with fame and attention difficult. Regardless of how you feel about these individual actors and musicians and artists, their profession includes feeling and conveying emotion in ways that move people. The very thing these people are celebrated for is a product of their sensitivity. It's definitely a benefit to them. I'll wrap up this show with a quote from Edgar Allan Poe. Beauty of whatever kind, in its supreme development, invariably excites the sensitive soul to tears. In future episodes, I plan on continuing talking about the benefits of being highly sensitive because I barely scratched the surface today. You can check out the show notes for this episode at highlysensitiveperson.net slash episode 59. While you're there, you can sign up for my twice monthly newsletter, which will notify you of new blog posts, podcast episodes, and curated interesting HSP news. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to support it financially, then please become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash HSP. You can support the show by giving a recurring donation or a one-time donation in any amount. Even $1 would be fantastic. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash h-s-p, patreon dot com. If you can't afford to support financially, you can show your support by rating the show on iTunes. If you aren't sure how to do that, I have a handy instructional video at highlysensitiveperson.net slash h-s-p podcast. Thanks so much for listening. 